But I remember John Mitchell pulling me aside, uh, who's the coach, and he sort of said, um, how are you feeling? I was like, oh, I'm a bit nervous. And uh, he goes, well, I picked you because you're the best in the country. And I remember thinking, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, I never really thought of it like that. Richie McCaw, Canterbury and captain. My parents actually came and picked me up because they were up from the farm and we went to where they were staying at some friend's place and it was announced on the radio. It wasn't even on TV that day. I guess I had a, I didn't really expect to be named or anything, but there had been a bit of talk maybe that you're in the mix. Sat there and listened to the name read out on the radio. And actually, I don't know if it was my father, but well, my uncle was there or, or something, but he filmed it, filmed me while it was read out. So I actually got that on tape, and uh, yeah, so it was a pretty cool moment. I guess it was something like, it was hard to sort of believe that it was true. I'd only just sort of got myself into um, like the Canterbury team. It was had, had All Blacks, yeah, so to play alongside All Blacks was pretty cool in that regard. So the idea of being in an All Black team straight away didn't really come into my head. But because you, you hear the talk going on, you go, oh, maybe there's a possibility. But I didn't want to get my hopes up too high because you, know, you might have been disappointed. But it's funny, you, you get named and it's all very cool, but you're like, it's a long time before you actually get on the field because until you get on the field, you're not really an all black. But the thing was pretty cool is all of a sudden, like, man, I'm pack my bags and going to Auckland to assemble with the All Blacks tomorrow. Um, I thought, wow, that's pretty pretty awesome. And then you start getting phone calls and uh, I don't think any text messaging was around much back then, <laughs> but uh, certainly phone calls. And then I remember the, the press actually turned up, they wanted to get a photo of me with my family. So that was a uh, <laughs> photo mum and dad got at home, which was quite cool. Probably not someone who gets too emotional. I was, I was probably more excited and I was like, Wow, this is this is something I, you know, obviously dreamed about, and I thought, man, I wonder if, uh, wonder what it's going to be like, and and you know, you get a chance to go to the UK and Ireland to play for the All Blacks. I was like, man, that's that's pretty, pretty awesome. But yeah, the first moment of getting out in the field was, um, I guess, that's the moment you call yourself an All Black. It, the con I'll give a bit of context. We, we'd actually flown to Northern Ireland, and we had a a game where the All Blacks played Ireland A, so not a test match on the midweek. And I'd been named on the bench, which kind of meant I was going to get to play the test on Saturday. So it was a real balancing, like I wanted to get on the field, but I was like, I'd rather play on Saturday and the test. Um, so I stripped, got ready to play, but never got on the field. So I was like, okay, I got a jersey, but I never actually got a chance to wear it. So, and then obviously we, we moved on to the, the Dublin, down to Dublin to play the test and uh, I, I still remember the moment that the whistle went and I started running from the kickoff and, I, and it went through my head that well, at least I'm an All Black now. Uh, you know, like no one can ever take that away. And so it was kind of a weird thing to think but it was sort of like fucking kind of relaxing just get on playing rather than sort of get on and hurt yourself in the warm up or you know, do something silly like that. So uh, so that I guess that went through my mind. But the, the, the one person that I thought was pretty cool to play alongside was John Alomo was in our team and like his um, presence and I guess uh, star factor in the UK was way more than ever was in New Zealand and just wherever we went how much people you know and I was a bit blown away by that and out in the field like when he got the ball it was like pretty cool to watch. The first thing I did I dropped the ball I was like oh, that's not so good. <laughs> um, but then I guess kind of got into it. But the game didn't actually go the way we, you know, playing Ireland, um, you, All Blacks expected to win. But we were losing it um, early in the second half. They'd scored a try, and I, I, I remember thinking, oh god, this isn't sort of panning out the way uh, it should. I, talk, I mentioned Jonah before. I remember him scoring a try, made it look really easy, and then it sort of things happened from there. We ended up, I think. I mean, what, about 40 something to 20 something. Um, but it was sort of a period there where the crowd were right into it. They thought the All Blacks might uh, be finally beaten. And I was thinking, oh, I hope this doesn't turn out uh, to be a bad day. But uh, the, I guess the moment at the end that I was a bit blown away by is um, we were standing in a line out with about a minute or two to go. And, um, and I heard my name read out over the speaker. To, and I'd been named man of the match. I thought, wow, this is. <laughs> but unexpected. You know, I played okay, but I didn't think it was that good. 
In the lead up to it, there was obviously I was only played a couple of games. There was a bit of talk around whether I should have been picked, or, you know, those sort of things. Not that I really understood it at the time, but I remember John Mitchell pulling me aside, uh, who's the coach, and he sort of said, um, how are you feeling? I was oh, I'm a bit nervous. And uh, he goes, well, I picked you because you're the best in the country. And I remember thinking, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, I never really thought of it like that. Um, but that sort of gave me a bit of confidence just to go out and get stuck in.